Happy Easter! I hope you're all having a lovely weekend with your families or uh, however you choose to uh, choose to spend it. Today's a special day for us um, because it's Mr Handyman's birthday. I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> oh dear, I really dropped the climber. I thought it was I thought it was Sunday the twentieth of April, not Saturday the twentieth of April. So as a consequence, he hasn't got any presents. He hasn't got even a card. He's got nothing. <laughs> but to make matters worse, for our dinner, before we usually have a, a, an early supper before we do a live on a Saturday, and we've just had beans on toast. So that, that's his birthday dinner. Tomorrow, however, we're having leg of lamb roast, because that's when I plan to do his birthday dinner. So anyway, that's just the way it is. I'm really sorry about it, my love. That's fine, my sweet. It always comes around again next year. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, we have a new addition to our um, studio setup here. Mr. Handyman's looking at me like I've just given birth or something. No, it's not that. We have a a bell and. If, if any of you ask a question at any time, Mr. Handyman's going to ding his donger and, don't, and um, ask me the question that's been asked and hopefully I will be able to answer it. Um, is that all? This is the one that we're doing tonight. I did give you an, an option of two, but this was the one that you um, seem to like the best. I'm going to do it slightly differently for this uh, live because I think it doesn't really stand out very well there. Uh, and although the original photograph was green, be sort of goldy green behind him and green in front, I'm actually going to make the grass still the same green, um, but I'm going to put them against the sky and I think I'll leave the poppies out as well. Of course, if you want to put the poppies in, that's fine. Uh, it's your painting. So I have um, in readiness for this. I'd like to say I'm organised, but to be honest, this last hour, this last hour has been a bit chaotic, really. Um, on YouTube, I've had a series running um, hour by hour. Every Saturday night gets um, uploaded onto YouTube of the Tuscan House. In fact, I can show you it. I think. Um, okay. Uh, there we go, uh, which is now pretty much finished, I think, uh, ready to be varnished and framed. Uh, so I just have some final little bits that I wanted to add on to the end of the last video for that. So we did that. That was supposed to take 10 minutes. It took about 40 minutes. Um, and then I wanted to get this blue on here ready for, for the live. So I was frantically doing that. Um, uh, yeah, so it's been so I just need to kind of chill down now, chill a little bit, and get this. Show you how to how I'm going to approach this live. Okay, let's get cracking. So as you can see, I've got my blue uh, down to represent the sky. It's a uh, I've blended it from dark through to very light, and I've done the whole board. Um, even although there's grass go going down here, but it's very light, and it won't. Uh, it won't affect the way that the uh, green goes on, it'll still look fine. We've got our hair, who sits about there, I think. Um, yeah, that was another thing I had to do, I had to enlarge the hair. And then it wanted to print it out on two sheets of paper. How come it's just, when it's mad, it's mad, isn't it? Uh, so that's the hair, the grass will go in, grow in front, in front of them and the sky behind. Let's get started then. Um, I used uh, ultramarine blue and titanium white for the uh, for the background, which is what I'd like to use for this. But I don't know where I've put it now. I'll use 
use some of the some fluid. It's fine, it's the same colour. Um, so we'll put a little few drops of that down. And a couple of drops here and one drop there. Because we're going to mix up some different um, tints of the of the ultramarine. We're going to mix it with white, titanium white. Similar sort of amount in each pile. And one of just pure white. Now if you remember back to when I did the the moon, uh, the wolf howling at the moon, uh, you remember that I had a tool called a moon maker. It's not really called a moon maker but that's what I use it for so I re always refer to it as that. That's how you know if I say to Mr Handyman have you seen the moon maker he knows what I mean and they come in sets of three these sizes here and you find them in the children's crafts aisle I think I've got these at Sainsbury's but I'm sure that most of the supermarkets have them they're about a pound or something for the three but they just do they do a good job for what I want them to do tonight and also as I say from moons and the sun breaking through skies that sort of thing so let's mix up these um, colours and then we're going to dob them onto our, uh, onto our background and give it a bit of interest. As I say, I've decided not to put the poppies on. I couldn't quite work out if they were the right size for the hair or not, so I've just erred on not putting them on at all really. Um, but you know, feel free if you want to. So these are, I'm going to end up with three different shades of, of blue for my um, dots that I'm going to put on. I don't know what the weather's been like with you today, wherever you are. Uh, here in very, very north of England, um, it's been absolutely glorious. Really, really, really lovely and warm. Some proper warmth in the sun, which is so nice. Um, not that I can say that the winter's been dreary, I mean it absolutely hasn't. It's uh, probably for some wildlife and stuff it's probably been almost too good. But it's it's really nice on days like this when the fields are full of lambs and oh it's just joyous. And it's Mr Handyman's birthday. Right okay so we've got three Three colours mixed up there. Where's my towel from? So what you need to do, um, don't just dip them in straight away. You need to do with these what you do with your brushes before you start to paint. You need to get some water into them. So dip it into your water pot and squeeze it um, like you would with a bath sponge, you know, to get the air out of it and the water into it. Same, exactly the same principle and fetch it over to your towel, put it in your towel and squeeze it. So there we are. And then let's start darkest, we'll start darkest and we'll work through to lightest. So twist it. I'm just off there aren't I slightly, just off the screen. Uh, I can just about, let me just adjust your camera. That's, that's fine. So all I'm doing is I'm twisting it one way and then the other way to load it up with, with paint. Um, make sure that you've got quite a good load on there. And it, you'll see at this stage if, you, if your dabber is too wet because you get bubbles um, forming. You don't want that. Uh, so there, I think we're all right there. Um, so you just make a start and it's completely random. There is no rhyme, no reason. And the best way I've found to get a good circle is place it down gently, a little bit of pressure, turn it to the left, make sure you're not moving it, turn it to the right and you'll get a good circle that way, I think. And that's the best way I've found. Load it up again. And you want these to be random and to be honest, 
achieving something random is much more difficult than following a set pattern. You know, it's you're, you're, I don't know, your brain doesn't work in random, well, my brain doesn't work in random particularly well. Bearing in mind that we have got a hair to put in, but I don't want there to be a halo of dots around them at all. Um, so we'll just carry on like nothing's happening. Now that one's just being absorbed slightly then, I quite like that. I don't want too many of these on it, it starts to look silly. And it's quite nice sometimes if you get ones that are just coming over the edge. So I'll put one down here and I don't know whether I've got a line forming there, which I don't want. I'll put one there. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So let's rinse that water, that paint out of our um, dabber. Dry it off again in the, in the towel. We'll go for our next lightest colour. Same process, load it up, twist it in the paint so that you get a good load of paint on it. Um, with these backgrounds, you can use different colours. You, you know, of course you can. Um, and it's a really good background to experiment with. It makes a lovely background for... I've done set a couple of paintings uh, with this as a background. So trying not to um, form a pattern here. And maybe overlapping some. And here we can go into this colour. It's going to stand out now. We're light enough for it to stand out against the dark. Um, don't put one there. As I say, it's really difficult to work out where random is. It doesn't really stand out, but it's there. We know it's there. I'll put one down here. Now that's me sort of finished with that. I think I'm gonna. I was gonna use the small one to put other other dots in. Has anybody joined us, Mr. H? Is everybody off having fun? Uh, various points. Of course, I don't know if they're still around, yeah. but we had Julia, Candy, Claire, Audrey, Carol, and Anna, and Penelope, and Patricia, oh. and Carolyn has just joined us. Hello, everyone. And she says hi. Hi. How nice, uh, how nice of you all to join us. Thanks very much. Um, right, this is a lighter one, so it's obviously going to show up more in the, in the darker areas. So... I'll put one there, just overlapping there, um, and one on the edge there. And then I'll, I'm just going to come and overlap some of these, so you, so you really do see where they are, because I think you wouldn't see it um, necessarily. So it came, it was sort of brought to my attention through the week, actually, that um a lot of you think that what i do live is um what i'm expecting you to do that i'm expecting you to go away and produce a picture identical to the one that i've produced and that is that's fine if that's what you want to do that's fine you know i walk you through the steps and um i see some lovely reproductions of the of the lives that i've done but what i'm really trying to show you is techniques the techniques that are used during the lives that you can take away and use for your own um, for your own pictures for your own art. So this background, I think, now I'm going into pure white, um, and that is a colour that really is bright. You really will see that. I'm joined by Trudy. Hello, Trudy. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, so 
you know, be careful with the white. Make sure that you get it really circular because it stands out if it's not right. So just a little bit of pressure, twist it to the left, twist it to the right. As I say, try and get them random, which is a bit of a feat to achieve. But this is a technique that um, you could easily take away and, you know, make your own. Do it different colours, do it different, you know, cover the whole thing in the bubble effect. Only put them very lightly, use loads of different colours, make it as zany as you want to. But actually, I think that's, I think that's fine. I think that represents the sky which is what we wanted to do. We've got our kind of abstract clouds there. Um, that, and that, that's fine. I'm happy with that, really, I am. Um, I'm just going to have a bit of a, bit of a clean up here. And I've got far too much colour out. What are we? Mr Handyman's been very busy today doing art making a, a piece of mixed media art which I would show you but we're only half he's only halfway through and I don't want to spoil the surprise but I can tell you that it's looking it's really looking good I really want to have a go at what it is that he's doing it's um it's just so immediate so exciting I know this makes me look like I'm really tight that I don't want to use another bit of plastic for a colour but it's it's masking tape done, so I'd have to pull it all off, and I'd have to mask and tape a new one. So there you go, good as new, good as new. Now then, the next job is uh, locating. I couldn't trouble you, Mr. H, could I, for a new uh, water pot? Because this has gone blue now with all my all my thingies in. Thank you very much. You do need brushes back? I might do actually, yeah. Should bring you some water. Yeah, thanks. I think that's dry. So I'm proposing in the picture, this picture will be the giveaway this week. So there'll be a separate post on the page um, saying that, you know, the, the giveaway from Saturday Night Live being this. Um, please post whatever it is I decide I want you to say in the post underneath and share the page um, or, or share the post or whatever it is that and we we do we send them out religiously on a well usually a Tuesday actually um, and we post all over the world so if you want to be if you want to win it you've got to be in it so watch out for that post that will pop up on the page thanks very much that's grand right so I'm sure all of you by now know my um, magic trick, which is the Sorrel wrap. Sorrel wrap. Come on. Come on. The FI. <laughs> it's a Sorrel transfer paper. That's what it is. Don't go wrapping your food up in it. It's not for that. You probably could, but I'm not saying you can. Um, it's this, it's got a sort of waxy side on that side and a, a papery look inside here. You use it like we used to use carbon paper in the old days. It goes between what the picture that you've got and where you want to transfer it onto. It's this particular pack that I've got comes in five different colours. So whatever background you've got, there will be an appropriate colour for you. And the other thing that I need to say is, don't feel like you're cheating because you're using transfer paper. That's that's kind of daft, really. This, what I'm showing you how to do is how to paint. It's not a drawing class. It, it, it isn't. If you can draw, that's great. Draw your hair on. Um, but we are learning how to paint the hair. So in order to do that, we want a good representation of the hair. Like I say, if you can draw it on, draw, draw it on, that's great, that's fine. But 
this is how we do it in this group. <laughs> so I'll, I need to find out where I want to put him really. Um, and I think about it there. I think that will give us enough grass at the front. And I think it fits in quite nice with this. Yeah, let's go from there. Now what we do is we get our duct tape, which is here. Is this called duct tape? Frog tape. Frog tape. Frog tape. Yeah, frog tape. It, this is it. It comes in this thing here. Um, and it comes in different surface things. We go for delicate surface, low tack. Which frog tape do I use? See back of pack. And it tells you all the different ones. We go for the yellow box and so far, they'll probably do it tonight now, uh, it hasn't pulled any of our backgrounds off when we've done it. And I just use it really as a hinge, which you'll see. And I know it's low tack, I know it says low tack, but I still stick it on my clothing and pull it off. So it's, I've lost even more tack um, before I put it on. So I'm just going to put that on the side of the hair, onto my background, press it down, not too hard. Pop it out of the way. So now I've got my hair there to, to transfer and if I lose any of the details, I can just flap him back over and he will be in exactly the same place. I'm full of tips tonight, people. Full of them. Full of something. Uh, right, so let's just draw his outline and then we can get cracking with that. I'm not exactly 100% sure what the difference is between a hare and a rabbit. I'm sure if I showed this to 100 people they would say it was a rabbit, but it did say on the photograph it was a hare, so I'm going with that. I think hares have got longer ears, maybe. Maybe they've got even longer ears than this, I don't know. Would you like to know the difference between a rabbit and a hare? Yes. You won't find a hare in your bedside drawer. I don't even know what he's talking about. But it's his first bit. So we'll say nothing and carry on. So I'm just drawing out the important features. He's going to trouble the bell tonight. No. Maybe everybody knows everything. I wouldn't be surprised. We've got some really nice pictures appearing on our page. So I'm guessing we've got some learned folk. I think a lot of people are probably out having barbecues and away for the weekend. Yeah, I've gone down the pub for a drink. Yeah. Um, most of our usual crowd <laughs> seem to be giving us a miss. And I know the ones last week when I said, do you want to alive on a Saturday because it's Easter? Oh yeah, we do, and now they're not here. I know. That's terrible. I know, I could have been off doing things. You could. Instead we're here doing things. But I'm sure the catch is on there. Uh... Replay. Replay. I don't like the shape of this guy's mouth, so I'm just giving him a bit of a sort of face lift as I go. <laughs> right, let's have a look then. So there we are. That's that's excellent. So that's Sarral transfer paper. And if you can't draw, it's a godsend. Even if you can draw, it really saves you time and it's very, very accurate. So you can get it in your picture exactly where you want it. Um, okay. You don't have to worry about your proportions. Or... No, you don't. You just, and you know, if your picture isn't big enough, blow it up, print it out bigger or 
s'more or whatever. Uh, right, let's get started then. So the, the colour uh, of, of this guy, as you can see, actually that's not a bad match, my picture, and me using. He's not brown and he's not black, and I'm tempted to say he's mousy, but it's, you know, he's a mousy kind of colour is what he is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix brown, white and a little bit of black in it um, and put the first coat um, of his first coat on it. So I'm taking raw umber. And taking a little bit of black. Be careful with black, it's very strong and it'll deaden anything really. Um, that you put it in. So um, there is a, a, a black called Bone Black, B-O-N-E, Bone Black, uh, available that is, it's black, but it's not so deadening. Um, and that's easier to, to mix. It's not quite so frightening. Well, not that I'm frightened of black, you understand. I've got a nightmare about it. So that's the raw umber and white, which you can see that, that colour there. And I'm just going to add a touch, and that is a touch of black, and let's see where that brings us to. Not quite enough for his undercoat, I don't think. Okay, I'm quite happy with that, that's fine. It's Easter Saturday, let's not dilly too much, eh? So I need a... an angle shader. Moisten your brush, dry it off. And let's get, let's get started with this. So his inner ears, the fur seems to go that way. It's quite important that you, you lay down your brush strokes uh, the way that you would, uh, the way that the fur grows. You, you can't, you can't get it back afterwards um, if you don't. Doesn't matter how many coats you put on top, it always looks like it's growing that, the, the way that you've put your first set of brush strokes on. This really is just the the underneath, the blocking in, if you like. Um, this bit down the side is very dark, so I'll just leave it as it is. Um, and this is the same carry on as we had on the other, yeah. With the same very dark bit uh, as it joins onto the head. Dogs are barking outside, so Bobby's decided to have a go. Doors open tonight for him, though, thankfully, because it's so warm. This is the first day that we actually haven't had the fire on in the evening, if you know what I mean, um, which is quite remarkable. So um, let's let's move down to his body. So there's a dark, there's quite a dark bit up here under his chin. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll put a lot of strokes in and then we can come back and put some details on it. As I say, the, the fur has to, you have to paint the fur in. We'll paint his body and then we'll come back and we'll look at the details that we need to be um, aware of to give him some shape and some proper looking fur. 
try not to paint straight edges if you can because fur just isn't it isn't straight that's a much more pleasing pleasing line there is anybody there should we just stop and do a video Um, a lot of people join, but there's, there's no number at the top. Oh, right. Oh. Talking to ourselves, then, probably. Probably. So, we'll just get on with it, I guess. Yeah. Same down here, try and make it, um, not smooth you don't want it smooth and come outside the line that you've marked um your transfer line so we want it going in the direction that it's going in so down his chest it's going straight up and down and on his sides it's going from side to side Okay, so let's just come back and look at the, the black for which I'm going to use the bone black that I told you about, which is here. I've got this in, um, in fluid acrylic, it doesn't matter, it's golden acrylic, just the same, and it's bone black, and it's not as black as the, as the Mars black, but black enough for what we want here. I'll just rinse that um, other colour out there. Pick up a little bit of this um, bone black here. And have a good look at your Bugsy. See where he's where he's dark and where he's light. So he's quite dark under here. Um, and he's quite dark down down this side. A little water on there. Quite dark down here. So you see, this black is is dark, but it's you know it allows you to work with it. It doesn't sort of stain your work as you're going along. So it's a sort of flicking motion um, to get the fur in. straight down here to be honest. I'm just going to mix a bit of my Mars black through that because I'm really struggling uh, for you to see it. And then it sort of goes down his back pretty much. This is a kind of rapid rabbit. <laughs> if there's nobody watching then um, really I'll, I'll just do a very quick version. So he's got a little bit there and he's got some down on his chest down here. Okay, um he's got a little bit here. Make sure that you get the bits in, you know, that's important that's making him a hair. Rabbit, whatever you. Uh, we've got a very dark colour up here. It is actually quite smooth on the edge, but it goes into the ear like that. Flick it, flick your ear brush. Up like that. Um, and there's a little dark bit here, and just simmer a bit here. Oh, 
Okay, so a little bit of darkness just on the edge there. A little bit there. And you see as you start to go around that he begins he begins to look um as he should. So seeing as I've got the black on the go, I'll just uh, move on to his face. And there's a dark bit there. And here. Uh, there's white or, or cream at any rate round his eye. Under his eye here we've got a bit of, of dark colour going on. And down into his very rabbit you looking jowls here. And it's quite dark down this side too. Now then I just need to find a small brush. This one will do the job nicely. I just want some black and put some of these facial features on. We'll paint his eye in. Which is in there. And the other one. So we can let them get dry and then we can go go around um, do the cream on the outside. He's got a very dark line under here. It doesn't quite meet. And then around here there's some dark business going on. Down here. And down here. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, the only other bit that I've missed out here is completely under his head. It's sort of like a demarcation zone. <laughs> That's important because that really gives us the shaping of, of him. Okay, right, so he looks a bit goofy at the moment, but um, he'll be fine. So I'm just going to take a quarter inch angle shader. I'm so used to having this angle shader in my hand that the other one, which is also a quarter inch angle shader, it just seems, it feels really sore, that one, not my angle shader. I don't know why my other angle shader is here. Yeah. Has just joined in. Who else? Leanne McClendon. Oh, Walridge. hello Leanne. Yeah, she posted a nice picture in the week. So we'll just go back now. So we're just kind of, um, we're not covering up the dark marks, but we are going over them, if that makes sense. We're allowing them to shine through. Um, You know, make, they're there, we can see them, um, but like that, they're there, but they're kind of covered over a little bit. So let's um, let's do this, a similar thing here. Now that is a straight line there, so I'll put that in as a straight line. God, he's looking really sad, this <laughs> Sad to keep going on a rabbit. Yeah. Um, this, this really demands lots of very fine work around his face, which is he's not getting tonight, I'm afraid. Um, you really need lots of little, little strokes with a little, little brush um, if you want a, a really good result. But we'll get, you know, we'll get something approaching. The right thing. And once again, pay attention to the fact that you have got dark marks in there. You want to cover them all up entirely, but you don't want them. You know, it doesn't really have any black hairs on the surface. They're all sort of 
within his fur. Well, he looks like he's got one gigantic eye and one quite small eye. <laughs> we can rectify that. We have the paint. We can do anything. So, um, around here then, under here, there is a dark line. So leave the dark line, but bite into it with the brush. So it's not a line, per se, if you understand me. And then just... You'll see where you put the dark, the darkness on. But you get a much more realistic coat um, than where there is there's no dark because it shows through. Now this is a whistle stop tour. I mean, it's really um, it's, <laughs> this is painting for <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> um, but I, it is alive, though. We can't take. I can't take, take forever over. over it. This down here is very, very, very fine. And if I was taking my time over it, I'd have a teensy, weensy little brush, um, and do lots and lots of of marks over there. But I'm hoping I'm showing you enough that you you get the idea. You put. It's full of contrast. The fur, the coats of animals is full of contrasts. And you need to see past the top layer to see what's underneath. And very often that's what you need to paint first. Um, sometimes you need another coat on first, then the dark, then something else, and then something else again. Um, but you, you'll get the hang of it the more you do. Um, and then when you get the hang of it, suddenly everybody will start saying to you could you do a portrait of our whatever he's called our dog and our cat and remember the cat we had 10 years ago that died i've still got a picture could you do a portrait it's up to you how you answer that it's a bit stressful doing somebody's pets is all i would say to you Right, so where's my round? I'm going to take my round and I'm going to make, I'm going to make this uh, colour for his nose, which is pretty much this colour with a little bit of white and just for the sake of haste, I'm going to use um, some high flow. Just drop one drop, oh well, it's about three drops, into there. Mix it up. The high flow um, acrylics, they're really, really lovely acrylics. They're the opposite end of the scale to the heavy body. The heavy body, body is the thick. They can also get in, just about getting pastel work from the heavy bodied um, if you put it on thick enough. The um, fluid acrylics, like the, um, the ultramarine that I used, they're thicker than the high flow, but still fluid enough. Um, and then there's the heavy bodied and then the open, of course. But the high flow is particularly good if you're doing very, very fine details. So if I was doing this fella, let's say properly, I mean, I'm hoping he's going to look like a hair, but really properly, I would be using a really, really fine brush. In fact, uh, where's that brush I was using the other day? Here. This is the brush that I was using the other day. Um, and I don't know if you can see just how fine that is. I was putting whiskers on a, another hair I was painting. Um, and it's very difficult to get the heavy body onto a brush like that because it's thick. And if you think about it, a very feeble brush like that hasn't got the strength to pick up the thick paint and push it about on the canvas. So if you use the high flow, it's thin, you can get it on a thin brush and you can get some fantastically thin lines. So that's kind of the difference between those, um, in case you were wondering. So he's got a little bit of light here. And it sort of goes down all the way down here, actually. Yeah, the uh, high flow... Uh 
similar to inks, aren't they? That sort of yeah, very inky consistency. The, the, the fluids are very like tube mayonnaise. Paint. Tube paint as well. Mayonnaise, we yeah. to say, but yes, tube paint. And obviously everybody's thick, heavy, <laughs> gloopy. Yeah, w which, you know, we all use, we all love. It's it's gorgeous stuff. It's um, the heavy body. I I mean, I particularly love open paint. Um, it's it suits my way of working. It stays open. I like it to stay open. If I'm doing something that um, I want to dry off first, then uh, you know, obviously, I don't use the open paint. It would be a waste of money. Amanda, hello, Amanda. Welcome along. You're watching a sort of whistle top, whistle stop, um, hair being painted here. But I think we're getting the. Uh, what do you think, Mr. Handyman? Is beginning to look like a hair at all? Yes. It's actually quite nice for the for the looseness and the speed of it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. You know, everything doesn't have to be blooming. You're not always aiming for a masterpiece, although it would be quite nice once in a while, or even once. Mm. And that's where we have the longer videos to get all the detail in on a live. The live usually is just to sort of touch base with people, really. I sound, I sound like I'm in a business meeting, don't I? Touch base. I mean, what's that a bit? <laughs> I've given him a bit of a generous eye socket here. I'll go and I'll resolve that. Um, soon. So his nose has got a sort of light bit over the middle here. Uh, it's light under here and there. And he's got this sort of funny face business going on. like that I need to come back over it um just not painting in in its entirety so I'll come back to our, ba our main colour here um and I'll just just paint that in around there because he's got a giant eye at the moment. Paint that line in. Let's go back to a little bit more light here. There's just a flick of light down here where that he is turning round. Zoom in a little so we can uh, see what we're up to. Um, and the, there is a, a little light line that comes down the middle here. There we are. Um, so where am I on? Any more light? Any more light for anyone at all? Well, this is quite flecked here, so I'll just. Now you see, even as big as this brush is, and it's for me that's quite a big round. I don't know what number they call it, uh, six, nine, maybe I don't know, whatever it means nothing to me, I'm afraid. But even that, if you load it and roll it and paint with it properly, you can get some very nice fine marks. You can make some lovely marks with it. So I think. Um, making progress we're just putting some marks on his chest like that uh, and i want to go back into this our original sort of color here um because i made a bit of a muck with his eye so we'll just resolve that and i just need a color somewhere between the light and the dark there for his nose here. No, oh, it's just a bit, I need it a bit lighter than that. Otherwise you won't see it. There we are. That's that. And just at the end of here there's a... I think I need some black actually. So I've painted out all the black. Hello, thank you very much for spending your Easter with us. We were feeling very alone and neglected.
precious, it's Mr. H's birthday. But anyway, you've joined us, so thank you. What am I doing here? How many mouths has he got? I don't know. That's his nose. That's his upper lip. That's his bottom lip. Ah, it's his nose. Oops, sorry. Sorry, people. That was me bashing the uh, pallet can. This bit here that doesn't belong. a bit under his nose, that's his top lip and that's his bottom lip here, yeah, that'll be it. Looks a bit odd. But anyway, right, so I need some um, quite light colour, so let's just add a little bit more white into, into that. One thing I would say with these high flow acrylics is uh, they work by a, a nozzle, you undo the nozzle, you squirt a little bit out. Always, always, when you've got out what you want, put the nozzle back to closed because it's so easy to spill them, knock them, pick them up to put them away, whatever. And before you know it, you have got a literal shower of acrylic paint everywhere. Um, so just, you know, open them, use what you want and just uh, shut it. Would be my advice because accidents like that you can live without. Right, so let's have a look at these eyes again. Really quite light around them. I should put that all the way around and I, I don't think it necessarily comes to the bottom so I'll just uh, paint that in. Let's get rid of that little bit at the bottom. There we are, near enough. Um, so now I'm going to go back to a little bit of the dark colour that we had, the bone black. Just give him a slight bit more definition on his face and whatever. Um, it's just got a line that sort of comes off from there on both sides. Um, got a bit down here really. Not, not been very much at all. It's got a line coming down the middle of there. A line down here, a line down there, a bit more dark under here. Okay. So I'm actually going to put the highlight in his eye um, and I'm going to put his whiskers on and then I'm just going to come back over his uh, face. What did I say? Highlight in his eye. Put just a dot on the end of your brush. And it is really just a dot. And try and get them in a similar sort of place otherwise he looks a bit bog-eyed like that. That's fine, that'll do me. Now then, um, yeah I'm just waiting for that to dry. I just want to put another another bit of this on it and then some whiskers, then the grasses which take literally five minutes and we're done. It's just a bit darker down in there. Okay, how's he looking? How's he looking, Mr. H? Looking absolutely like he's ready for the March Madness. Well, that's good. Uh, whiskers, okay. Well, seeing as we're talking about, oh, I can't really 
I could put black. Oh, no, that, yeah. I'll use this very fine brush that I was talking to you about. Uh, wet it as you would any other brush in any water. Get rid of the excess. Um, and I'm going to mix up from the the Mars black. I'm going to mix the Mars black up till it's a sort of inky type uh, consistency. And then we can pick it up with this very fine brush. So you load this the same way as you would uh, load any liner scripts brush roll it in the inky consistency like that and then just start pulling it up rolling and twisting it between your fingers as you do it's a bit of a knack to this you'll get the knack eventually and then when you pull it up you get a very very fine well we'll see how fine now after all my chattering about it that is fine you can't actually even see that I think that's so fine that I don't think you can see it. You can. Can you? Yeah. See, it's very, very fine. Well, whiskers are. And some of them cross over. A bit like our eyelashes. They uh, sort of have a mind of their own. I'll go back over some of these so we can see them. So you see the very, very fine lines that you can get with some brushes. And it just it just takes a bit of practice about pressure, um, loading the brush, etc, etc. But it's worth it, I think, because uh, it really looks professional when you've got very fine lines like that. So I'll rinse that out straight away. Don't, don't, for heaven's sake, leave a brush like this in a water pot. It's not strong enough to stand on its end. So what will happen is the hairs will splay out and you'll never get it back to um, to that lovely point again. And that'll be the end of that and that'll be sad. Okay, so he's all right. Let's deal with the grasses now. Is he all right, Mr. Mr. H? He's fine. Does he need anything a... else done? I don't believe he is. Okay. Um... I'll tell you what, I'm just going to... Well, maybe a bit of uh, I'm, I'm just going to lighten around his eye a bit. He's just still, still a well, bit. Around his eye, but do a bit of lightening and, and perhaps on his uh, chest, he called. Lightened or darkened? Or lightened, lightened, just that. Uh... Oh, yeah, I did put it in. Put it in again. Yeah. This is uh, white here that I've got on my brush now. Because he's getting quite dark here, of course. It doesn't look necessarily on the camera. And I'm just going to put that just over the top of his eye, like that. Because he has got that very bright flash there, which I'm, I bet is something, something peculiar to hers. I bet that they have that. He looks a bit bog eyed now. But, um, Probably what attracts the ladies. Yeah. I'm painting a puffin at the moment, and uh, the beaks are quite interesting. They have these great big orange beaks when it's time to attract the ladies. And then when it's not time to attract the ladies, they fall off. Did you know that? Did you know they fell off? Yeah. It's the sort of thing we men have nightmares about. <laughs> I'm so, uh, there's so many responses to that. Please notice how good I'm being. I'm saying nothing. So, you know, as I was saying earlier, I don't know if you caught it or not. With fur, always make sure that your brush strokes go in the direction that the fur is growing. Um, and if you've got time, the smallest of brushes, the thinnest of marks for your very top layer is, uh, you know, that's really kind of what you're what you're aiming for. Little little marks. That's perfect. Tonight it's a bit of a whistle stop tour, but. There he is. I think he looks quite hair-like. Quite hair-like. Not bad for a very, very quick. So the grasses. Right, so I think I may have introduced to you previously a brush that I use for grasses, stalks, stems, thin lines uh, again, really, um, is this sword brush. And it's a Deleroni System 3, same as a lot of my brushes are. It's a quarter inch and it's a sword. 
and it looks like that, which for all the world looks like an angle shader, um, but it's not, it's slightly more rounded. And it is great for doing grasses. So let's get some greens on the go. Zoom out a little again, just to uh, make sure we're all on there. Ooh, wrong way. There we go. So I've got some uh, sort of mid mid green. These are coming straight out the bottle tonight, guys. There's well, like the sachet, should I say? There's no mixing, no. Paula's uh, joined us. Hi, Paula. I uh, thought I'd missed it, fell asleep. I'm uh, birthday just in, and he looks very handsome. Thank you. But I think she's referring about the hair, really. Oh, uh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it does look very handsome, Miss, Miss Handyman does. Right, so there we are. We've got three, three greens straight out the tube. That's as good as it's going to get tonight, guys. Um, so let's get on using this sword. Um, looks like I have a nice day today, Paula, at the beach with the, at the river with the noodle. Right, so we'll start with uh, this medium one first to load the brush, same as you would any other way. Make sure it's damp, then load it on one side, load it on the other. And with the sword brush, if you're doing grasses, obviously the thicker parts are at the top, they get thinner as the grass grows up. So we will do exactly that. We'll start at the bottom, put it down and pull it up. Pull it down. Need a little bit more water on my brush. Just to make the paint flow nicely. Pull it down. Push it down and pull it up. I don't think it's like in this canvas very much. I had a whole new um, load of MDF boards cut through the week. Um, MDF, it's the thing to paint on. It's really gorgeous. It's so smooth. It, it's, it's lovely. I might have to just move on to a slightly larger sword brush. I feel like I'm not getting enough enough paint. Which one shall I go for? Go for the bit of the wrong one. I feel like I'm running out of paint before I'm getting anywhere. That's a bit better. So I'll just do this around the bottom. Give it one coat like this, and then we'll come back with another colour. So we'll go up over Mr. Hare because he's sitting in the grasses. Oh, got some black there, never mind, it doesn't really matter. He's sitting in the grasses having a look to see what. Well, I don't know what to hair is he? Frog. Do they eat frogs? Do they eat frogs? I don't believe they eat frogs, no. Huh. I think they're uh, like rabbits, they eat grasses and seeds and berries. And Vegan hares? I do believe so. Because, I mean, that would be like some B-rated horror movie, wouldn't it? <laughs> some hare with big teeth going around eating people. <laughs> I didn't suggest they were going to eat people, mm. merely frogs. Frogs, yeah, that's possible. I mean, I, I can't, uh, I can't be hundred percent certain. Did you know that herons eat snakes? Did you know that? Uh, yes, I did actually. Uh, why have I told you before? Yes. Right. <laughs> so literally, what I'm doing is I'm filling in this this bottom area, willy nilly. Please remember that grasses don't always grow from the bottom straight up. That just looks naff if you do that. Um, I'm not suggesting that mine looks too great either. But So I'll move on now to the uh, darker green. Give it a bit of dimension. I've still got some light green in my brush, so I've got a bit of a crossover thing happening. really want to get this bottom bit filled up with colour. 
I'm going to cheat a little bit. I think I'm going to have to spray my canvas because it's just um, not. I need to fill my bottle. It's not the paint isn't coming off the way that it, it really should be. It should slide off into a lovely peak like that. Let's just paint some of that in on the bottom. So as I said to you, we will be having a giveaway this week. Despite the fact we've been left high and dry, almost on our own. Thank you for joining us, Paula. Nora joined in. Hi, Nora. Thank you very much for joining us. And Paula said the sun made them very sleepy. And do you always paint with the cameras flat down? Uh, yeah, I do actually. Even with um, large canvases, I do. And oddly enough, when I pastel, I use an easel with it up straight up. That may have something to do with the fact that pastel is so mucky, isn't it? Yeah. The dust that comes off it's ridiculous. And you need so it to fall out. You've got to have it to fall falling out, otherwise it just makes everything muddy. So I have an easel and I make um, <laughs> a little tin foil, not a tin foil hat. No, a little tin foil tray at the bottom of it, so the the pastel dust can drip out, um, run off into the tray, uh, collect there, and then we can just uh, dispose of it. I haven't done any pastelling for a while. I was saying, um, Paula, that uh, Mr. Handyman today has been doing a mi um, mixed media piece of art, um, twenty by sixteen. And it's it's really looking nice. I'm I'm, re I'm really impressed by it actually. Um, I need to have a go at his method. I would show you it, but it's not fair because it's not finished. Um, hopefully next week it'll be finished. We can all have a look. In fact, it might be the live next week. Who knows? I can't see Mr. Handyman teaching you alive, but you might entrust me with the method. You fancy teaching a life on the street? You can't anyway, because I'm not producing all this. I don't know how to do it. I don't mind, but... Uh... I feel there might not be too much talking if you were doing it, because you're quite a quiet source. I can turn in the charm on, as you know. Oh, can you? Indeed. Mm hmm Um, I was going to actually, because I didn't put the poppies in, I was actually going to put some uh, buttercups, some properly formed buttercups in here. But um, I think we're running out of time really. How long have we been on? Uh, you have been on an hour and eight minutes. Yeah, so um, I think it's getting to the stage. Actually, we're, we're losing the light as well. So. Yeah. We haven't got our studio lights on at the minute because they're so hot. If you can avoid them, it's you know it's good. It's really boiling hot. But, um, I mean, obviously, many people can take as much time over the grass as they like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is just literally to finish the piece. Linda's joined us and Susan Hole. Oh, hello, Susan. Nice. Thank you very much for joining us and, and Linda. Um, Susan's turned into this prolific mad painter. And I know, there's two or three a day. Yeah, I thought it's incredible. Incredible. I'm very impressed. Susan, I've finished the Tuscan house. It is, as they say, in the can, ready to go out. Um, well, number eight's gone number out eight already. Number eight will have gone out already. It'll be on uh, YouTube now. And the finishing one, I think we'll put it on Wednesday. Shall we? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, but, well, but well, well yeah, it will be ready before then, probably. Oh, well, it might be up before that. I'll leave a message on the Facebook page if, uh, if when we get it put up. Um, and then that's it put to bed. Uh, it's been a long trip, hasn't it, Susan? But I have selected our next one. It's gorgeous. You love it. Well, I love it. 
So I'm just going in with some really uh, bright green here. Just to add a bit of contrast, definition to some parts. Make some clumpy bits where they might be growing together. Put some more crowns here and around his lordship. Sitting waiting for a frog. <laughs> no, he doesn't eat frogs. Well, if he eats grasses, he's got it made. He's sat in, a, in the middle of grasses. It'd be great if you ate grasses, wouldn't it, really? No, it wouldn't because he'd be a sheep. Okay, so I think we're uh, pretty much there. I'll just bring them down a bit. I'm not happy with them growing in the middle of the middle of nowhere. Right, okay. I think that is a done deal. I appreciate it was a slightly whistle stop. Uh, but I think we got there in the end. He's a rabbit. There's the sky. There's the grass. If you uh, are doing it at something like a normal rate of knots, Take your time, um, you know, get a bit more detail on, on the fur and whatever, and the grasses need to be much more refined than they are. But I like it better with the sky, the the hair and the and the grasses. Um, and I think with time it, it could have looked quite nice. Alright, so um that's it for this week. I shall see you next Saturday, seven o'clock here in the UK time, uh, in the interim. Please, please, please keep posting your images that you, your pictures that you've done onto the page. It's so inspiring for us all to see them. It really is. And I appreciate every single person that puts a picture up there for us to have a look at. Um, don't forget, we've got the competition running for the cover photograph. Uh, this month's uh, winner was Georgia Rolls, who's 13. The girl's 13. She's so clever. Um, but that will run out at the end of April and we'll have a new one up there. So you need to put your posts, your pictures in the post that's at the top of the page um, to be... Uh, some late joiners, Trish's chic furniture joined. Hi. Uh, Ziggy joined and Fiona Foster joined. Hi Ziggy, I just need to tell you this. Mr Handyman today has been busy doing a multimedia piece and it is absolutely right up your street. So it's possible that I might be doing that for next week's live. It's really, you like it. I just know you will. So with that and all that said, happy birthday to Mr. H once again. Um, nobody's troubled our new toy. Maybe next week. Yeah. And I'll see you through the week, no doubt. And I'll see you next Saturday for sure. And you can watch us on Catch Up FM. Yeah, watch us on replay, hashtag replay, and uh, thanks very much, everyone. Bye!